Well, change is a coming, and it's not good change if you live in the state of Illinois. We're going to talk about the Healthcare Right of Conscious Act there in the state and what they're doing now. We're going to get into all the details and much more. Just a second, guys. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. Also, if you could, guys, consider making a generous donation here to our ministry as we're demonetized on YouTube. They don't support us. You can help us out in a major way, though, if you enjoy the daily video content we put out, talking about end-time Bible prophecy headlines and our ministry here of getting people to Jesus Christ. You can help out through PayPal or Patreon, or even just five bucks a month on Patreon will get you bonus content. Plus, we include the links to the YouTube videos so you get all alerts when new content arrives. You can comment there, censorship-free, send me direct messages. It's a great way to stay up to date with all the content that we put out here. Another big reminder, I can't stress enough, go sub to me on Rumble if you haven't already. That's our backup in case we're kicked off of YouTube. We're already posting there, so go check it out. All those links are down below. A big thank you to everybody already contributing. And for those of you thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So this act has pretty much been around ever since going all the way back to 1973. This was meant to protect people of faith. You know, the Right of Conscious Healthcare Act here in Illinois. And, you know, this was meant to protect those in the healthcare field that did not want to perform certain acts that violated their religious beliefs. And even up until recently, that would have included everything going on with Rona. However, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker and the Democrat-controlled state legislature had said that, you know what? Rona is different. It is so detrimental. It is so serious that we do not think that people of faith should have a say at all and whether or not they're going to reject to any of these measures that we put forward and illinois has been one of the states that has put forth some of the harshest restrictions you see what is happening right now in chicago with the police force with the fire department first responders all of them that city was already falling apart years ago before any of this was even a thing and it's getting even worse now but they figured you know what let's just make it even worse than it already is because if there's one thing that we know how to do here in Illinois, it's just completely cripple our state. That's what Democrats are known for best, right? Ruining things, ruining cities, states. They have a proven track record of this, ladies and gentlemen. So the legislature has now voted to remove religious protection, remove your religious freedom from being able to reject, file for an exemption for any measure having to do with Rona. Because again, the government knows what's best there. And again, Rhoda supersedes anything else that's going on as far as any other, you know, conscious act, you, you, uh, you know, a disagreement you may have, a, a conflict with your faith, anything else. No, no, no. Rhoda is the top one. We're not going to let you dispute that one. Your faith is no good here. We're sorry. You can believe in God if you want to, but whatever objections you may have, it's just not going to fly in the state of Illinois anymore. The governor is expected to sign the bill into law very soon. It won't take effect, however, until July 1st of 2022. But even still, uh, this is something that going forward is going to affect people of faith for quite some time. And I always like to look at the spiritual side of things here. And you guys know this about me. If you've been watching me for any length of time, what is it really all about at the end of the day? It's about hurting people of faith, persecuting believers, persecuting Christians. Did Jesus tell us this was going to happen in the last days? I think he did. I think he said you would be persecuted. You would be, in fact, hated by all for my name's sake. Many would be jailed. Many would even be put to death for their faith, for their belief, for following Jesus Christ. Christ. These people are incredibly hostile towards followers of the Lord. And it's going to get even worse. It's going to intensify in the days to come. That is why. Look, they don't. Oh, you, you, oh, what well, did you say that? What did you say? Oh, the Constitution, the right, <laughs> violation of the uh, of the First Amendment, the right free freedom of religion. You don't. What do you think? You live in America pre twenty nineteen. What does the Constitution mean anymore to these people, ladies and gentlemen? 
when it's rejected at the highest level of the land and no one is held accountable for anything that they do. God will hold them accountable in his time. There will not be earthly justice for these people. No, 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 no. A higher form of justice is coming for them. We have to ride this out. It's a lot easier to do that, though, if you're with Jesus, if you have a relationship, an established relationship with him as your personal Lord and Savior. If that's not something you have, we want to offer that to you right now like we do in all of our videos. You can accept Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. And I'll lead you in that prayer. You can put it in your own words. I'll give you the steps that you need to bring up before the Lord. Here's the first thing that you want to do, and that's to acknowledge that you're a sinner. It's something that we all are, but God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do, though, is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from a lifestyle, habit, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He wipes that sin away. The Bible says he won't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I will have more for you guys on this down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.